Hi again, uh, I've got something a bit different here from the usual lights and microcontrollers today. We're going to look at a Jacob's Ladder. Now, before we start, just want to be very clear that using high voltage can be deadly and that I take no responsibility for your safety should you choose to follow along. Touching the high voltage output while this thing is on can cause anything from a painful burn uh, all the way through to an agonizing death. So please don't do this unless you have some experience with high voltages. Now there are many ways in which one of these can be built and I chose for me what was the cheapest and easiest option. I bought a ZVS driver plus a TV flyback transformer from Amazon and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to get one yourself. We'll start by having a look at the driver itself and we'll see what it does. Uh, for these first experiments, I'm gonna connect it up to 12 volts and um, let's see what happens. So I have the output of my ZVS driver here hooked up to the oscilloscope and I have the input here connected to my power supply. So let's apply 12 volts to this and see what we get on the oscilloscope screen. Now we can see it's uh, jumped up to here. Let's bring this back down so we can see a bit more clearly. Okay, so we've definitely got a DC output here and we've got five volts per division. So we've got five, 10, 12 volts. So we're putting 12 volts DC in and we're getting 12 volts DC out. So um, what's the point of this thing then? Well, let's have a look at the schematic and see how it's supposed to work. So this is a simplified schematic of the uh, circuit we just looked at. And you can see we've got 12 volts coming in here. Unsurprisingly, if we put our probes between here and here, we're going to get 12 volts DC because nothing else appears to be happening in the circuit. Uh, and the reason for that is that we haven't got any inductance here. So what we need to do is set up a tank circuit. So let's put some uh, inductance in there. Now these inductors represent the primary of the flyback transformer. I'm just going to change the values here for a minute. So make them a bit more realistic. Uh, and now we can see we've actually got some oscillation going on. So let's try and explain what's happening. So when we first uh, power the circuit on, power flows through both sides of the, uh, the inductor just here. Remember, this inductor is actually the center tap, uh, center tap primary of the flyback here. And it flows through both of these to the drains of the, uh, the MOSFETs. Uh, at the same time, the, the same voltage appears on the gates of the MOSFETs uh, and they begin to turn on. Now, due to discrepancies in the manufacture of the MOSFETs, one will switch on faster than the other and allow current to flow through it. This then steals current from the other gate uh, of the MOSFET as the resistance of that one's now higher and so that one switches off. An LC tank circuit is formed uh, from a capacitor and the primary side of the uh, flyback transformer. And this is why when we looked at the output before, it wasn't oscillating. Uh, by not connecting the flyback here, uh, there wasn't any inductance. So this is the real schematic for the ZVS driver. Uh, it's a bit more complicated, but it basically behaves in the same way. Um, the inductor here uh, is just to limit the current uh, into the primary uh, and it reduces the spikes, uh, current spikes in the circuit. It doesn't really affect the oscillation. Uh, these two 470 ohm resistors here uh, limit the gate currents to the MOSFETs to, to protect them. The 10K resistors here are pull downs and this prevents the MOSFETs getting stuck on. Um, the two Zeners here uh, prevent the gate voltage from exceeding say 15 volts, whatever we set this uh, Zener value to. Uh, and the fast diodes here and here uh, pull the gates to ground when the opposite side of the tank circuit is at ground. If you want a bit more information about how this circuit works, um, I've left a link to a very good description uh, in the video description below. So um, before we actually measure this properly, let's do a quick calculation to see what frequency uh, we're actually expecting here. To do this, we will need the capacitance, uh, which in this case is about 660 nanofarads, uh, and the inductance of the primary. Now, I don't have an LCR meter, or at least nothing capable of measuring the inductance of this primary. Uh, so to measure it, I'm going to use a technique I mentioned a few videos back using a signal generator and an oscilloscope. And if you want to find out a bit more about that, you can click the uh, card in the top right at the moment. I've set the signal generator here to 20 kilohertz and 3 volts peak to peak and I've put that across the primary um, of the flyback transformer. Uh, I've also put the oscilloscope across that as well so we can have a look at the waveform. Now at the moment we've got a frequency of 20 kilohertz which is correct but we're reading a peak to peak voltage of 170 millivolts and that's because the flyback is sort of loading the output from the uh, function generator. So what I'm going to do now is adjust the frequency on the function generator until I get VPP on here being half of 3 volts, until I get it being 1.5 volts. So let's start by increasing that. Okay, we can see we're on 580 millivolts. We're on 900 millivolts. Keep going, 1.2 volts. It's 1.8 volts. Drop that back a little bit. Um, let's move, move it up a little bit more. 1.52 volts peak to peak there, that'll do. And the frequency at 1.52 volts we're getting here is 102 kilohertz. So we can work out the inductance uh, from the following equation. So L equals uh, root a third times R over 
2 pi f, where r is the impedance of the signal generator, which in my case is 50 ohms, and f is the frequency that we recorded, which is 102 kilohertz. Um, so it's going to be L equals root a third times 50 over 2 pi times 102 kilohertz. So that gives us about 45 microhenries. Okay, now let's see what our oscillation frequency should be. So the frequency of oscillation, f, is going to be given by 1 over um, 2 pi root um, lc. And uh, let's put some numbers in there. 1 over 2 pi, it's going to be square root of uh, the inductance, which we just calculated, which is 45 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, multiplied by the capacitance, uh, which is 630 nanofarads, I believe I got it as. So that's 630 times 10 to the minus 9. And that gives us a frequency of around 30 kilohertz. So that's what we're going to expect to see our oscillation frequency um, of the L uh, ZVS driver. Now let's measure the output of the ZVS driver with the uh, primary of the flyback transformer actually attached. Now at this point we have to be very very careful because when I make this uh, go live the um, output from the flyback here will be at several thousand volts. So let's switch this on and see what we get. Okay, so I don't know if you can make that out on the screen there, but the frequency that we're getting is 39 kilohertz. Um, so not exactly the same as the 30 kilohertz that we predicted, but at least it's the same order of magnitude, and it means that our calculations are more than likely to be uh, reasonable. So if you want to wire one of these up yourselves, this is how it's uh, wired up. Um, this is switched off now, which is why I can touch everything. Um, you can see here we have a center tapped uh, primary on the flyback transformer just here. And this is the high voltage output wire, the one at the top. And the grounding wire is the one that comes from the bottom just down here. Now if yours doesn't have this wire already soldered to it, you're gonna to have to find a pin out to it and try and work out which one of these pins at the bottom is the ground. Now mine actually came with this extra wire just here as well. Um, don't entirely know what this is for. By the looks of the wire, it's another high voltage output, but maybe not quite as high voltage as the, the main output coming out the top just here. Now, I'd love to be able to measure what the output voltage was between these two cables. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any devices capable of doing that. I expect the turns ratio on this to be uh, at least a few hundred, so they should be putting out thousands of volts. Um, the voltage that comes out of here is, in fact, DC. As you can see from the, the diagram just here, a uh, TV flyback actually contains a, a bunch of diodes which means that it gets rectified to DC. I can't find a data sheet for this specific model, but they all seem to be pretty much the same. So this one, I think I'll have to cut off at some point. Uh, and I say, this is the main high voltage uh, wire. <laughs> when I got this, it actually had a sort of rubber cap um, attached to it. That normally go connects to the, um, to the glass tube on the, uh, the CRT. So I'm gonna hook this up to 12 volts again, and uh, let's see if we can produce some arcs from this. So now all that's left is to turn this stuff into a Jacob's Ladder. So we've got the driver board, we've got the flyback transformer. This is all going to be powered by this uh, rather beastly 15 amp, 24 volt supply. So in theory, this can give out 360 watts. I 3D printed uh, this little base just here. And uh, then what I'm going to do is take these contacts and I'm going to screw those into here. And then I've bent some uh, coat hanger, found some coat hanger wire, and I've bent these into sort of L shapes, and they're gonna get inserted into there. And hopefully uh, this should all look rather nice.
So you can see that works really nicely. Uh, we could increase the voltage to get bigger arcs, but then it also gets a bit more dangerous. Uh, the plan eventually is to build a proper case for this, and I'll make another video on how I do that once I get around to it. As usual, uh, thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.